Welcome to Winners, Wallets, and Worldviews, the only show that's going to teach you how to be somebody. Where in your life did you learn that you're not good at Take what you're most passionate about and what you're most fearful of. What is the plan to overcome that fear and what is the plan to enact that passion? Well, hello everyone. I know it's been a few weeks. What's going on, guys? If live. you um, if you're joining us right now on our live stream, you'll see that we're currently not in our typical setting. We are currently in Mercedes Benz Sprinter van that's been converted into a limo of sorts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the van for all of you tuning in today. So we, so we titled this Van Ventures. I hope you guys are having a fantastic evening today. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going with the van pun. I'm just fanatical about <laughs> But so this is pretty cool. And uh, Wait, for those of you who are on live right now, can you like see the height of this van? Yeah, I can it stand up completely. So Check this tall. out. No, I'm going to show everybody. So tall. Yeah, I, get, like, I can stand up. There's like so much room for activities back here you can like play and dance and then there's sick ow i hit my head on the tv oh yeah tv oh there's a tv yeah, above us so um legit anyway so we've been uh we have we didn't do a live last week this or the week before i don't think or the week before i did my i, I posted about our event over at the howard mm-hmm. um and that's actually well we'll get into that of why we ended up purchasing this but it's kind of funny, so I know a lot of you guys were kind of following us along of how we we sold our house. So those of you that don't know, we had this big... A month and a half ago. It's been a month and a half since we sold our house. Like, so crazy. We had this it's big, beautiful lake home, and we sold it. We made a huge profit on it. That wasn't necessarily the only reason, though, that we sold it. One of the things was we wanted to do was really start to downsize all those things in our life that don't necessarily serve us. So... I thought about, I saw this huge movement going on everywhere, this um, van life, hashtag van and life. And we've been like <laughs> followers of this van life for uh, almost a year now, where we were yeah. like oh, envious yeah. of these people just traveling everywhere you can in check their out. van. If you want to kill an afternoon, go like YouTube van conversions, like Sprinter on Van, Pinterest, Ford Transits, um, cargo vans. I mean, it's hilarious what people are creative and they do to these different vans. So one of the ideas was maybe we just decide to live in it. That's what we're doing. No, I'm just not, kidding. No, no, we're not living in the van. <laughs> um, but what we are going to do, what we did do is we bought one. So it's actually crazy. We weren't expecting for this to happen this quickly. Hashtag van life. Yeah, hashtag van yes. life. We're getting that crap trending, dude. <laughs> this is Mike Hughes, guys. He's awesome. Um, if you want to sell a home in El Paso, go visit Mike Hughes. Shameless plug to people that always jump on my lives. Woo. Remember that. So if you guys are listening to this in the aftermath and you want to jump on my live, I will plug your business if you guys connect and hook up. Anyway. So um, the story is actually really funny as to how we acquired this Mercedes Sprinter van. So take it away, AJ. Well, so I decided I was going to go look at some of these Mercedes Benz Sprinter vans at the dealership. So we're looking and they show us like the cargo van. The trans the transporter machine van, AKA the, like the airport van, yeah, like the ones you get into like the airport and all this different stuff. So yeah. people were showing us all the so they're showing us all these different vans new, and at first I was like kind of excited because I'm like this is a crazy value. So you got you know diesel engine in this bad boy, tow capacity like five thousand pounds. Um, you can put all I mean it's and this thing's like brand new. They're like forty nine thousand dollars. Okay, so or this is more. And or a lot more. For those of you guys that know automotive too, you'll know that the Mercedes-Benz uh, engine is just flawless. I mean, that's really what built their legacy as a business. So I can't believe at this point that nobody else has jumped on the van wagon, you know. <laughs> I just came up with that. <laughs> nobody else has jumped up on um, on the van wagon for buying some of these vans. In fact, like, I was just talking to a dude on Facebook, and he's like, society made a huge mistake switching over to the minivan because these big vans are where it's at well nonetheless i'm looking at all these different ones and the sales guy's like well what are you using it for and i was kind of explaining to him well you know we've got um an upcoming speaking tour 
And what I wanted to do was be able, it's kind of getting expensive flying my team to different places to do these speaking events. Like we just hired a video guy and we have my manager. And then of course, Marissa has to come so, along. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So running the numbers, it just kind of made sense for all of us to kind of get into a van together. That's really spacious. It has like drop down, like leather seats. Yeah, check this out. And it goes like way back. And they swivel around. Swivel. Check that out. <laughs> you know, and like it's leather, plush leather. I'm not talking about like the guy that, well, we'll get to there. But anyway, so I'm telling this guy, um, the sales dude, about the upcoming, you know, speaking tour and all this Travel different stuff. Travel we want to do. And I was telling him, we're just jamming about ideas. I'm like, yeah, people are like converting these into like campers and RVs and all this other stuff. And it's really funny because, um, people were converting them into like limos and limousines. And that's kind of what we wanted to use it for. It was like a little bit more comfortable way of traveling around. He's like, you know what? I saw one come in the lot this that I just sold to this guy. And it's kind of like what you're talking about. Um, and he's like, I kind of, I sold it. So I don't know, but you could buy one of these and got it out. I'm like, well, can I at least like see the one that you sold? And he said, sure. And he, and he opens up the door and it's got, you know, flat screen TV. It's got plush leather seats. It's got the whole works. So the next day he calls us back. And he says, yeah, that, that, uh, that van we're talking about, it didn't sell. He's like, the financing <laughs> fell through, and I know it's a long shot, but um, would you be interested? And I'm just like, yeah, we're going to buy it. We're just absolutely going to buy it. So we went and drove it around. This is what we want. This is where we want to go. And it's sick. So you run all the numbers, and everybody, you know, I beat people up. Like my clients, I beat people up on Instagram, on Facebook, for the people that buy depreciating assets, things that don't add value. And that's when the first thing, so I'm like, okay. If I'm gonna run these numbers, how is this gonna add value? So number one, we won't have to fly to a lot of the short-term places that we're planning on going. So that was the first thing, right? So if I had to fly or ran all the different numbers, we're saving like $500 a month on our travel based on using this asset to propel. So we're saving money there. The other thing is it's way more comfortable traveling. If you guys can't see, um, you have to sit at the airport. So when you're looking at, is time a commodity? A lot of times when you're getting layovers or delays, you have to show up at the airport an hour early. And we're in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and there's an airport nearby that's a little bit more expensive, but then there's an airport that's like two hours away in Milwaukee. So you gotta think, you gotta drive about an hour and a half, two hours, you gotta sit there an hour. So you're starting to think about where your time is valuable. So those are the first two things. The other thing is, how is this purchase going to make me more money than the depreciation? And that's where you want to start thinking about it. So if I can get out there and share my message and get in front of more people and start speaking more in this epic van, <laughs> hashtag van life. Epic van. Yeah, so epic we're just going to rebrand it to a limo, but I think van is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. We decided we are going to call it a limo and keep calling it a van. Darn it. Well, I mean, the whole name of the podcast I here know, is I Van forgot. Ventures. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so that was one of the decisions that we made. Now, this backseat, we're going to convert into a fold-down bed. But it's just crazy because this just popped into our lives really quickly. We weren't expecting to pull the trigger on it. And it was kind of like a joke that never really Fulfilled. happened because yeah. we just did it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about how being decisive and making sure that you know what you want and being able to act off of intuition. So, Yeah, a lot of changes. How we were like very decisive. We wanted to sell our house. And then... Uh, you know, that happened extremely fast. And then we decided, okay, we want to buy this van now. And that happened extremely fast. So now we're just waiting to move into um, the condo that's above my studio. That's happening pretty slow, but that will happen in the next couple. Yeah, like, so to put some closure to that, a, half. a lot of you guys have been asking, where are we going? What are we doing now? We're not going to live in the van. No. But we're we not going to have 10 kids either. I know some like. And I we're not probably going to sleep in here very that. often, <laughs> but it's just the idea of sleeping in here. If you know, it's like, you know, maybe wayside,ing it for long distance trips or things like that. But we're maybe. Marissa's a, a hotel maybe. kind of girl. Maybe you yeah, know. like a lot of people are hotel kind of people. Right. Like with the shower. And side rant, <laughs> I don't get like, look, I've profited heavily from the use of Airbnb, and I that's awesome that there's a niche of people that use Airbnb. But we're really not. I don't get it. Like no, seriously, I do not get. Like I'm gonna go use somebody else's stuff sleep in somebody else's bed you know like it's just so weird and i don't understand how you do that and then you could just get a hotel for like 90 dollars a night that's kind of professionally managed by hospitality people anticipating your needs in well, every so which way think. yeah i guess so so there's that <laughs> nonetheless um this van is going to be used to help us travel on our upcoming speaking tour so that's one of the things i wanted to announce to you guys is we're going to be going all over the country 
speaking at different locations. So we've got a whole bunch coming up in the Midwest and we're in the process of planning it. So when we get all that information together, we'll be sure to shout out or, or let you guys know and, and, and give you all the information where you can find that. Um, we're also gonna be going down to Florida for a couple different engagements. And then there's gonna be more local engagements in Wisconsin again, which was really fun. We did that last week. In fact, uh, as AJ um, Miniker showed up on our pod here today, we went up to Eau Claire and spoke at his event one time uh, last year. So this is pretty cool. And uh, we're open to stopping at places in between as well. So if you have, um, if you guys want to get together a, a group of people, we can do something small, 5, 10, 15 people at a restaurant or a bar or whatever. And we will just share the value and just mastermind and talk about some cool ideas and thoughts as we go forward. So that's what this is all about. This is how we can get out there and get active out in the world. Yeah, I mean, more. this is like our little piece of freedom, kind of how we explain how our house was almost like an anchor on a lot of the dreams we wanted to pursue. Um, and this is actually just allowing us to, you know, do the travel that we want to start up, you know, a little bit more. And also, it just gives us like the flexibility of our time too as well. It just kind of made sense for both of us. Maybe van life doesn't make sense for a lot of people, but Hashtag I don't know. We're life. like pretty pumped about Hashtag this like life. condo Hashtag. minimalistic uh, living and then, right. uh, you know, half the time living, not living, just kidding, yeah, before, traveling in the van. But before I got cut off, um, well, before I cut myself off with two side rants, to bring some closure of where we're going now that we did sell our house, our big oh, beautiful yeah. lake home, uh, we had flipped a... Um, a unit above Marissa's Fit Boutique. When we bought Marissa's Fit Boutique, that was a property we purchased, we rehabbed her unit, and then we also did some fine touches on the apartment that was above it. And we always did that knowing that it might be a place that we would live someday, so we wanted to make sure we went with a little bit higher end finishes. So we did the stainless steel appliances, the granite countertops, we refinished wood floor. Um, we had a really cool skylight in there, but because it started leaking, we took that out. We might open that back up though now that we're in there. Uh, but that's where we're going to be living. So we'll be in back in Oshkosh full time. We just had a really good tenant that's in there right now, and don't I want to kick him out. We kind of felt like, bad. Great. Yeah, I mean, it's like the dude works like across the street, feet pretty across much. Across the street. <laughs> so it's like you know, I don't want to just kick him out like that for no reason. So um, that's one of the reasons why we decided to humble ourselves a little bit, crash with the parents for a few for a few months until very um, humbling. That, very that humbling. unit opens up, but. Nonetheless, that's where we're going to be living, and then it's going to, we have this now so we can start traveling a lot more. So we're pretty excited to be going out there and start sharing the word and networking, connecting with a lot more people. In fact, we're going to be in New York City mid-April, so if you guys have any interest in connecting out in the New York City area, make sure you reach out. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. I always respond to you guys. Um, shoot me an email. You can go info at AaronJArmstrong.com, and we'll try to connect and, and serve and do whatever we can to make ourselves a little bit bigger than, you know, or at least participate in a bigger message than just ourselves. So um, that's a little bit of an update for you all. So I think um, so I mean, that's kind of exciting. You know, here we are in the van. We got plush <laughs> leather seats, this limousine, flat screen TV, Netflix. And like, don't and like let us lead you wrong either. Like the past couple months were really scary. There was a lot of uncertainty going around. Like when you list your house for sale and then you kind of don't really have a plan B of where you're going to live right away. Um, and then even purchasing this van on a whim, like I really encourage you to dig down deep with beneath yourself and figure out where are these values you have right now? Like what, what are they and what do you want to pursue and what's the fear that's holding you back? Like let us be the ones to go first and like show you like guys, like you can do this too. Whatever you want to pursue, whatever you want yeah. to create, however you want to live your life, there's no one way to do it. You know, like get the job, get the picket fence, the house, blah, blah, blah. There's no one way to do it. So let us be that vessel where you're like, holy smokes, like these people just had a lake home and now they're, you know, chilling in a van, probably in Utah in a couple months. <laughs> We're going to park, we are going to park this down by the river too, by the way. For all of you that understand the Saturday Night Live reference, absolutely. No idea what that is. Yeah, so you don't understand, you know, Matt Foley, living in a van. Mm. Now by the river, you know, yeah, Chris Farley in his prime, you know, classic. Anyway, so um, what? Anyway, back to what like Marissa was kind of talking Nothing about. Nothing good happens in the comfort zone. That's what I'm talking comfort about. Comfort is Absolutely. the absolutely comfort is the enemy of progress. Mm -hmm. Think about that, right? So going and doing things that are uncertain. So this was actually some exercises that I was doing early on in the year with New Year's um, was understanding where are my values. So one of them, a lot of uh, a lot of people I reach out to and talk with one of their biggest values is freedom. And what they all believe is that you need to start 
working on your business and working on your life and just slaving and putting money away for all these different things so that they can later achieve freedom. When in reality, it's like, you know, just one van away for freedom. (laughs) But I mean, people think they need the private jet, they need the private yacht, they need all this stuff. They need to start um, putting all their money in and doing all this stuff because they need to buy freedom from something. When in reality, there are a lot of different strategies when you start to understand what you really value. And that was my value. Mine was freedom. And I got caught up in that. I thought I needed to go buy as many properties as I could. I needed to have the cool, big, beautiful house. I needed to do all this different stuff. But in reality, all you need is to understand your value first and then build the strategy to it. And I can get freedom now. I mean, shoot, Marissa and I can just hit the open road mm-hmm. right now. Nothing but road, on the road again, Willie Nelson playing in the background. I mean, that's how legit this is going to be. But anyway. And I, um, I truly believe in, like, the process, process of, like, manifestation. So, like, what you are seeking is also seeking you. And how... You know, when you finally become decisive and you set your mind to something, how things will start to align and appear in your life that are, you know, seem like coincidences happening, but really it's kind of all meant to be because you finally made that decision to move forward with, you know, whatever you want to do, whether that be a business you're starting, whether that be, um, you know, a, a, a place you want to travel to or an income you desire so when you finally like become really decisive on exactly what you want like the body the mind nothing likes indecision that's scary that's fearful that actually draws a lot of anxiety become decisive on what you want where you're going what this looks like what does this next version of you look like yeah. and for us it looks like we were sitting in a van clearly <laughs> No, this is awesome. That was a great punchline to that. Um, but what I wanted to what I wanted to share with you guys though is the reason that all these decisions were made from us is because we understood that the strategy is important when the strategy should guide the tactics. Ooh, so here's the yes, thing, right? The strategy so, should guide so Sun the Zhao in his book, um, The Art of War. Sorry, The War of Art. Art of War, also a great book by Stephen Pressfield. But The War of Art. The art of war. Excuse me. Okay, so we got that right. The art of war. Sun Tzu. He says, um, strategy without tactics is noise before the defeat. Mm. Okay, so strategy without tactics is noise, or tactics without strategy. I'm all over the place. Okay, come on, get it together. Tactics without strategy is noise before the defeat. That's Sun Tzu's quote, right? So what that means is you guys can start doing the step by step, the daily things every single minute. And if you don't have a direction or a bigger picture or a strategy that you are shooting for, you are going to start falling apart slowly and but surely. And I thought that, I think that's what happened with me and that's what happens with a lot of different people that I connect with, is they think that freedom means a necessary precondition of building a certain level of wealth when in reality that could just be one precondition, but that isn't a necessary precondition to freedom. Freedom can come with absolute poverty. I mean, I think that's where a lot of motifs in some of these films like uh, Into the Wild or some of those come, right? Where you see the kind of vagabond style. When if you really are seeking freedom, you often don't need wealth. So you have two different polar sides of this that both fulfill the value of freedom. So I think that that's something good to understand. There's all sorts of different values, whether you value love or you value health or you value all sorts of these other things. Like some people that value health, you don't need to jump into a bikini competition or you don't need to be a bodybuilder because in fact that could be counterproductive towards your health in some ways. And Marissa talks about that a lot, about how people get so um, psychologically torn by the, the type of trauma that happens to them by trying to compete in different bodybuilding competitions when they value health, when they think that just the facade of health mm-hmm. is what they end up creating instead of manifesting true health within Ooh, themselves. Yes. So these are all sorts of different things that happen when you have tactics with no strategy. And that's the bigger picture today of what we wanted to talk about. That's the bigger picture of the, the van life, hashtag van life, van ventures, the fantastic evening that we're having. Um, that's really what we're trying to get at here is that in order to have freedom, and what I wanted freedom for was so that I could actually go out and help change more people's lives and help get out there more. And that's where I want, and that's the type of life that I'm valuing that I'm trying to create. So when I, when I make my decisions, first I want to look at my values, and then I like to see if there's shortcuts to those values. Are there, there, there could be shorter solutions. This could be easier than the way you think it. This could be faster than the way you think. And start brainstorming all these different ideas, and then you can start to create um, a, fa- a better strategy, mm-hmm. you know, and then you can start to put the tactics together that are a little bit more intelligent and more working smart versus working hard, right? So keep that in mind. Like, I'm going to try to get this right this time now. The Sun Zhao quote 
that says, tactics without strategy is noise before the defeat. And you guys can fact check me and, and troll all of my stuff if that's wrong. So um, we always can put those back in the show notes anyway. But Also too, like ask yourself, what is exciting you right now? I know with the Maria Kondo, whatever her name is, um, organization lady that's going around where it's like if it doesn't spark joy get rid of it but in a way yeah she's like completely right in that sense of what is exciting you right now and for us it was our businesses and seeing where they were going and how we wanted to keep improving them and keep serving people and for us like that is like our that is our guide like what what does our lives have to how do they have to look for us to keep doing that for keep building our businesses to keep helping people to keep yeah. serving and this right now makes sense for us and it may not make sense for you, but if it does, heck yeah, jump on to the van life movement. Hashtag van life. <laughs> but what, like, what makes sense for you <laughs> right now? Such a millennial now? move right there. I know. <laughs> Stream know. millennial move right there. But what makes sense for you to right now to keep up that excitement on whatever you want to be pursuing or whatever you are pursuing? Because right now, both of us, we can't stop talking about the growth of our businesses. We can't stop talking about, you know, fully one day being full-time, both of us entrepreneurs. Right now, yes, me, AJ, you know, obviously he's still working his corporate job but you know one day that's gonna happen and this is like for for um you know for a really big reason why we did this is because it's going to pursue those dreams we have yeah so there's a lot of cool stuff going on in our lives and I think that that's the thing is don't let the day-to-day -day cloud the vision of where you're actually mm. trying to get to yes. right so you have values yes. that you're really trying to reach and there's a bigger strategy that you're trying to reach don't let the tactics pollute the vision because you're going to start to see you're wandering around aimlessly in the pursuit of your vision when there's a faster way to get there. It could just be right around the corner and it could be just, you know, a random phone call from a dude giving you the keys to a new van. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so for, uh, for any of you guys that are just jumping on or just, just chiming in here, uh, what we do is what we just did is we purchased uh, a limousine, a Mercedes Benz van that's been converted into a limo that we're going to use as our upcoming vehicle to travel to our speaking engagements all over the country so we're really excited about that we're planning the tour right now there's gonna be a ton more information coming at you guys about where we're gonna be speaking and all this different stuff we mostly be me speaking but i imagine you might jump on the stage here and there because marissa always has so many positive insights Maybe. to the to the world so <laughs> but that's uh that's what's going on with us and those are some of the reasons that we thought why this was a good decision now um one of the things i will warn you of is don't just buy something to fulfill an ego or fulfill uh, a material good and that's I think where I beat people up on the depreciating asset do something from a place of love that's only going to improve the lives of others and you can help you build a, a pile of wealth or build an asset so like I said I ran some very careful analysis to find that this was actually a better more cost-effective alternative this isn't a toy. This is a business expense. I want you guys to start treating your businesses you, the same way. What do you mean to like just buy something to build somebody else up? I'm talking about something that will help catapult you or launch your business forward. So if you're going to be making purchases, it should be in a very so intelligently if you're a thought owner way. And you yeah. want to keep or even if you're like a, you know, if something that's going to at least help you move f faster and closer towards your dreams. Don't use it as a facade to make it seem like your dreams are already here. Gotcha. Use it as a vehicle, no pun intended, but use it as a vehicle <laughs> to pursue your dreams, if that makes sense. So that's one of the things that I like to at least clarify for everybody, because you don't buy things to depreciate, you buy things to appreciate. And if it's making you more valuable, then you want to obviously use that in some way in your business. And there's a whole plethora of things that we can do to make those types of decisions. Um, but that's that. So this is it. Welcome to the van. There'll be thing. lots of posts and lives Just, in like, so the much van. Room here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But we got um, a whole bunch going on over here at the Armstrong Ventures neighborhood. Excuse me. Um, we've got. A really cool project we're deep diving right now. Um, we're just putting together our pro forma, so we're really excited to see where that goes coming up. So and stay tuned. Um, yeah, so we're really excited to see if that if that plays off. This has been something that's been in the works for a while, and I think uh, we might start getting. We're really close to making this a reality and bringing it into our community. I think I was a uh, I was appointed to the business improvement district last week, which was pretty cool in our in our area of Oshkosh, where you help 
renovate the downtown to make it a little bit more business friendly. Where so, we'll be living in yeah, the next So we'll be living there and, month and a half. if you guys are in the area or in northeast Wisconsin, make sure you reach out and let's see if we can connect over coffee, even though I don't drink much coffee anymore and I or beer, but I don't drink beer much anymore, so Maybe we'll just have some celery juice and, you know, kale, apple, <laughs> salad or something. <laughs> so, hashtag, hashtag van life, hashtag millennial. You know? <laughs> um, but that's what's been new in our neck of the week, guys. So make sure that you reach out. we got a whole bunch of stuff coming at you. Like I said, upcoming speaking tour, and we got a big project we're working on. Marissa, do you have any big announcements that you wanted to let anybody know? Um, well, for those people who are in Wisconsin, Oshkosh area, I will be launching my Step 1 program this spring. So stay tuned for a date because we just wrapped up our winter Step 1. Um, but that is like the biggest thing going on in my studio right now. All right. Well, folks, I think that's, uh, that's really all we had, a little short one today. Um, but the bigger message today, the bigger picture of why we're talking about all this or why we did this or what all these stories really mean is because um, you want to make sure that you're not letting the day-to-day -day get in the way of the strategy. Don't mm -hmm. let the day-to-day -day get in the way of the vision. And that's really where it's at. And don't so. let other people's opinions get in the way of your vision. Boom. Boom. Hashtag van life. Yep living in this van heck yeah down by the river no we're not actually living in it but we'll be traveling in a lot that's gonna be fun anyway have a great great evening everybody have a fantastic sunday night and <laughs> we'll see that's not gonna get old i don't think yeah i got old like five okay. minutes ago all right guys thanks a lot we'll see you <laughs>